valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. All right, all right. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. <clears throat> thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm going to ask you to do something, if you can, look at someone else, make eye contact with someone else, and repeat these four words, <laughs> trust, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, in the Lord. Amen. Amen. that's going to be a word for the day, All right. that's the it's going to be an encouraging word to lift up, yes. trust. In the Lord. All right. We're going to see that no matter what our circumstances are, mm -hmm. no matter what we're going through, no matter what it looks like, mm -hmm. as David told us, we can trust yes. in the Lord. Amen. Right. Our scripture basis is going to come out of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. It's going to be a little bit before we get there, but that's what we're going to come out of. Trust. Trust can be defined as a firm belief and a reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. It is often said that good relationships are built on trust. Good relationships. Trust implies instinctive unquestioning belief in and reliance upon something. All right. Instinctive, unquestioning belief in and reliance upon something. All right. Like a child to have trust in one's parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's yes, trust sir. there. Yes. Most people have a level of trust built into them. And it goes towards, you know, their parents. Babies are a great example of this. If a baby trusts you, it will accept you. All right, all right. It'll be smiling. It'll be laughing towards you. It'll be playful towards you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But babies have an innate ability mm -hmm. to recognize distrust. Yes, they mm. Oh, they cry. Mm -hmm. They yeah. shy away from you. Mm -hmm. They will not accept you. <laughs> Other people around will be like, well, why aren't they coming to them? But babies have that innate ability in them. They recognize trust. They don't laugh. They don't smile. They don't cry when there's distrust there. People tend to place trust in many different things. Mm -hmm. Some people place their trust in their money. Mm -hmm. They make it a life pursuit. To go after money. Yeah. That's true now. To try to accumulate large amounts of money. Mm -hmm. At the expense of their family. Yeah. Time with their family. Mm -hmm. Relationships that they could be building up. Right. The goal of accumulating a lot of money is their crown and achievement or is their success mm -hmm. in their life. They think if they accumulate all this money that people would have more respect for you mm. or will think that they're smart or honor them. To some people, it's their God. Right. It's what they worship. Mm -hmm. Because they spend countless hours trying to make it That's true. at the expense of building good relationships mm -hmm. with their family. It's amazing to me how money in and of itself 
is completely worthless. Mm -hmm. It's completely worthless. Only when you exchange a good or a service does money have a value attached to it. Right? Mm -hmm. Now we can have different denominations of money, but it doesn't have any value until you exchange a good or a service mm -hmm. right. for it. We can have Bill Gates type of money. We can have multi-billions of dollars. But if we can't exchange it for anything, it's worthless. Mm -hmm. It's worthless. You see, I had to learn, and I learned early, not to make money my God or the thing that I chase after. Mm -hmm. Or the thing that I put my trust in. Because it would disappoint me. When I had my first job working at Harvest Foods, making four dollars an hour, sacking groceries, pushing carts out, you know, in, in high school at 16 years old. I had all of these plans for what I was going to do with that first check. <laughs> you know, all these plans. Oh yeah, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Because I had already tabulated up, and calculated up. Okay, I worked this many hours, I made this amount of money per hour. Hey, I can buy this, this, and that. Then I got introduced to a person called Fight. <laughs> Brought about great disappointment and heartbreak <laughs> in my life. And he just never went away from that day. I said, whoa, this is a whole other world. Now I gotta deal with taxes. I had not calculated that in because I had put my trust and what they said I was going to make. Mm -hmm. So I had an issue with that, Dad. I had an issue. I was there. I was there. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I said, because this, this wasn't what I agreed upon. <laughs> so let me go and, and, and let me go and talk to my manager. <laughs> and see if we can rectify this situation. <laughs> so I went into the office as a brilliant 16-year-old would do. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Hinton, our store manager, was working on some things. And I knocked on his door and he said, come on in. I said, there's, there's got to be a mistake or an error here on my, on my paycheck. <laughs> because I'm missing, I'm missing a few things over here. <laughs> and it's, it's not coming to me because you got my name on the check for this amount. And over here on this other section, I've got FICA and all and some other people are taking some things that belong to me. And Mr. Hinton, I, 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 I see it today, Mom. I see it today. He had his glasses on his nose, like this. And he looked at me and gave me a look. Like, are you serious? Are you really coming into my office with this? And I... I can't remember if he said it or if I heard it in my mind. <laughs> oh boy, if you don't get out of my office <laughs> with this foolishness. But I knew enough right then and there from the look in his eye to say, never mind. <laughs> get back on out of his office. You know, I got introduced to a world of fighting, and taxes, and That's other exactly. things. I was like, okay, my my trust in, in this money thing is destroyed right right away because I got introduced to a whole new world. So I don't put my trust in money. All right. Some people place their trust in another person, you know, like an idol. A lot of people they idolize movie stars, entertainers, singers. Sports figures, all different types of things, and all different types of people in all walks of life. They'll give any and everything to see them in person. They'll miss work, they'll miss church, they'll miss anything else to be able to say, I was there. You know, in Kansas City, 
either last week or the week before, you couldn't hardly get around downtown because of Garth Brooks was in town for three, four days, however many. Man, you know, the streets were empty around town. I could go anywhere that I wanted to go and not have a traffic problem because there's all these people that are downtown to see this scene. You know, Saturday, Sunday, a lot of people miss church because they were concerned about the concert. People, they get like children on Christmas morning when it comes to seeing Oprah live. <laughs> you know, Oprah's going to hold all your hopes and dreams for you. I wouldn't place my trust in Oprah. Amen. But I, don't, I believe the biggest thing that some people place their trust in is quite simply themselves. Let's take a look at the scripture in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 through 10. Book of Jeremiah, one of the major prophets. Chapter 17, <clears throat> verses 9 through 10. And the scripture reads, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So what we see here is that there are two facts about the natural heart. Mm -hmm. Two facts. We read that it was deceitful above all things, uh -huh. and that is desperately wicked. Today's society places such a big emphasis on trusting yourself and your heart to make decisions. Hmm. Reliance on Jesus Christ and the Word of God has been thrown out the window with man. We see in the world adults crazy enough to trust their children to make the decisions for themselves as to what gender they are. What bathroom they want to use. It's crazy. They allow them to decide if they are homosexual or not. And tell them lies of the devil. That they were just born this way. Deception. To all the people who say that, oh yeah, they're just, they're just born this way. They're, this is just how they are. They can make decisions for themselves. Well, I say the devil's a liar and so are you. All right, all right. <laughs> big it, big it. You know? God never has, nor will he ever, make a mistake. All right, man. All right. You want to know who God created you to be and who you are to be? I like the saying that I heard the prophecies in your plumbing. <clears throat> what that means is take a look downstairs. Right. You know if you're a male or a female. <laughs> All right. There's your prophecy. That tells you who you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> there shouldn't be any confusion about that. <laughs> Two very distinct organs. That's so true. Amen. That operate separately. Your prophecy's right there. That's who you are. You are the gender that God created you to be. All right, now. Yes. If you listen to the world, which tells you to follow your heart, and we just heard about the two facts about the heart, mm -hmm. right. you'll walk right down the path to destruction and death. Yes. You'll walk right down that path. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. I'll read that scripture for you. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15 states, Foolishness is bound 
in the heart of a child, uh -huh. but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. All right, now. It says that foolishness mm -hmm. is bound in the heart of a child. Yet we have some people today who are past childhood and age, but not necessarily past childhood and maturity. All right. Mm. Hmm. We see grown men, grown women, still thinking, talking, mm -hmm. acting right. like children. Right. <laughs> we see it. We see it. Some of them stuck in the past, living off of old memories. How they used to do it when they were young. All right. Man, how many times have we seen this? Old men in nightclubs trying to pick up young women. My Lord. Stuck in the past. Still with foolishness bound up in their heart. All right. Old women. Still trying to squeeze in the clothes that they couldn't fit 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> stuff popping out everywhere. Wow. <laughs> we see this stuff. Uh -huh. That's true. That's it's stuck true. in the past. <laughs> we see it. I know I'm not the only one that's observed this stuff, uh -huh. just in churches and different places. Mm -hmm. yeah. Foolishness. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's one of the things that, that I see. That I notice that pops into my mind, I'm just like, wow. They gotta grow up. They have to grow up. Yes. The heart is deceitful and wicked. Mm -hmm. No good thing dwells in the flesh. It'll lead you straight down that path of destruction into the doorstep of hell. Mm -hmm. The worst advice a parent can give their child is to follow their heart. All right, all right. Yeah, so many parents advise just that. Why? Why did they do that? Is there not anything else that we can trust in? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. The foundation of the message today. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord all right, <clears throat> with all thine heart yes. and lean not unto thy own yes. understanding. Amen. Amen. In all thy ways all right. acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Uh -huh. We defined earlier trust as being a firm belief in the reliability the truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. For the purposes of this message, we're talking about trusting in a person. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about just trusting in any person. All right. We're talking about trusting in the King of Kings, mm -hmm. All right. All right. the Lord of Lords, yes, yes. Almighty God, Jehovah, Elohim. Mm -hmm. That's who we're talking about trusting in. I can tell you all day to have trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And some will still not grasp the full concept of what it means to trust Him. Mm -hmm. all, right. all right. So what I want to do to help this come along is just give you three examples of people in the Bible who trusted in the Lord in whatever situation they were in, in life and in death. First example of a person I want to talk about is Joseph. Mm -hmm. right. Joseph was a man of great integrity mm -hmm. and he had great respect for God. He went through so many different types of adversities in his life without having a bad attitude, mm -hmm. without complaining, and without blaming somebody else and saying it's not my fault like so many people do today. See, Joseph understood that God is with him no matter what situation that he found himself in. Mm -hmm. He understood that. He trusted in the Lord at all times. When he found himself in that pit, 
Because of the coat he wore, he trusted in the Lord. When he found himself being falsely accused and thrown into prison because of the coat that he left behind, mm -hmm. he still trusted in the Lord. Yes. Oh, yes. How easy would it be for someone to question God and his purpose for your life if you had to go through being falsely accused of a crime that you didn't commit? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. How easy would it be to blame God? To not trust them. Would circumstances dictate your closeness to God or your distance from Him? Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Would circumstances mm -hmm. dictate your closeness to God All right. or your distance mm -hmm. from Him? All right. All right. All right. You see, Joseph, even in prison, he helped others. Mm -hmm. He still used the gifts that God gave him. Yeah. Now he could have been bitter and angry mm -hmm. with being falsely in prison. Mm -hmm. But he trusted the Lord. Yes. All right. And when the Lord decided that Joseph had got to the place that God needed him to be in him, All right. mm -hmm. that's when he released him. All right. mm -hmm. yes, he did. Some people live in a troubled place because they trust everything but God yes, yes. to deliver them from their situation and they stay in the prison of themselves. Mm -hmm. right, right. I want to say that again. Man, mm. some people, they live in a troubled place mm -hmm. because they trust everything right. but God All right. yeah. That's true. to yeah. deliver them mm -hmm. from the situation and they stay in the prison of themselves. All right, mm. all right. Mm -hmm. Joseph was restored to high honor mm -hmm. with man because of his trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. God used him greatly to save his family and to save many, many others. That's so true. You can read about the life of Joseph mm -hmm. in the book of Genesis, starting with the 37th mm -hmm. chapter. You can read all about him. You can read his story. And you'll see that he was a man who truly trusted in the Lord. And the second example, one of the giants of the faith to me, is a man called Stephen. Stephen, to me, is one of the greatest examples of a man who trusted in the Lord. In the entire Bible. Yes, you know. Great example. Right. Yes, yes. 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 I hold him in the same regard as Joseph, if not higher. Mm -hmm. Stephen spoke on the life of Joseph in Acts chapter 7. He also spoke on Moses as well. Mm -hmm. He set an example unlike anybody that I've ever seen in the Bible except for one. Before his death, Stephen had a vision of heaven, God, and Christ. Mm -hmm. He was a man that was full of the Holy Ghost and he was full of faith and trust in the Lord. Yes, he, was. he was also the first Christian martyr. Mm -hmm. hmm. He had incredible, incredible trust in the Lord. He sure did. Amen. He cast a lasting impression on a young Saul who had witnessed his death. Mm -hmm. You know that Saul later on yeah. became Paul. Right, mm -hmm. amen. One of the greatest amen. Christians ever after his conversion. Mm -hmm. But Stephen left that lasting impression. Saul was there mm -hmm. when he witnessed them stone Stephen, mm -hmm. beat him, and the witnesses hand over the rocks and drop the rocks. Mm -hmm. Saul was there to witness this as a young man. All right, all right. Yet he still went on to persecute countless Christians. Mm -hmm. There's no way that him saying Stephen, stand for God, trust in the Lord, there's no way that that could not have affected him once he became converted. Mm -hmm. Seeing that type of an example of someone trusting in the Lord. Yes. 
I believe that got Paul through a lot of the things that he went through mm -hmm. in his life. Mm -hmm. Was remembering what he witnessed as a young man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stephen had tremendous faith mm -hmm. in Jesus. Yes, he did. Think of the testimony that he's sharing in heaven right now. As we speak with people who are going there, the people who are there, mm -hmm. of how he trusted in the Lord, the testimony that he has to tell. Mm -hmm. Man, what an example Stephen oh, yeah. set for us to follow. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. But the greatest example of all still was set by Stephen. Mm -hmm. But by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. All right, man. Who came from heaven in the form of a man mm -hmm. to redeem us. That is my third example. Yeah. All right. All right. What better example is there than Jesus Christ? All right. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what better example? He totally trusted in the Father. Mm -hmm. How many numerous occasions did he have to trust God to bring him out of? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Man. From the time of his birth, mm -hmm. he had to trust God to deliver him yes. from the hand of King Herod. Yes. Not only for safety, but also for provision. All right, all right. As a baby. <laughs> wow. God brought him gold and other gifts as a child. Mm -hmm. Man. The money paid for his ticket out of town, and he paid for a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. you know? It wasn't like Jesus was poor by any means. Mm -hmm. He had great substance. Mm -hmm. He had to trust and believe God during the many years of his teaching and his grooming for the ministry. Mm -hmm. You see, you don't just get saved today and start preaching in the pulpit tomorrow. All right, all right. Man, right. We've seen that numerous times, right. mm -hmm. particularly in the world. Some big entertainer gets saved or some big singer, singer gets saved and a month later they're up preaching. Mm -hmm. There's no substance there. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything to go through All that right. have built them up mm -hmm. to show that they have withstood the test of time or that they have a right. solid, a concrete relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Those churches have to be careful about parading those people right up front. That's right. Some of them are just using them All because right. of their name. Of the person. Mm. Yeah. You need to have substance. You need to have a trust in the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Yes. You got to go through some things. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Even Jesus, man. How did Jesus yes. learn obedience? Mm -hmm. Through the things that he suffered. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. You got to go through some things. Oh, you can't yes. just, hey, I, I give my life to the Lord today. I'm preaching in the pulpit tomorrow, leading the flock. You got to go through some things. Mm -hmm. God has to take you on that process. Yes, he does. You got to learn a few things first. Mm -hmm. You need to be seasoned and have discernment operating in your life so you don't fall victim. Right. Fall victim to what? To all the devil's traps mm -hmm. right. Right. that he set for you. Mm -hmm. But just because you start preaching, that doesn't mean that you stop doing the things that got you there. All right, all right. With promotion in the natural and in the spiritual, more is required of you right. to maintain that level and to go higher. So true. So true. Just like a job. You get promoted, they're going to give you more in the natural, more money. Mm -hmm. They're going to give you more responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. They expect you to maintain that level that you were at previously and then take it higher. They expect more for me. God does the same thing as we get promoted in Him. All right, all right, man. It's not okay. Now I'm ordained. All the time I used to spend in prayer, I don't have to pray anymore. No. <laughs> the love that I used to show people, I don't need to love them anymore. I can treat them like Jonah. <laughs> no. no, we don't do that. We got to grow in grace. Yeah. Grow in love even yeah. more. Mm -hmm. More is required. Mm -hmm. And it's not it's not burdensome. No, it's, it's not a burden. Mm -hmm. We gotta trust 
in the Lord more. Because yeah. the enemy is bringing more attacks sure. against you, heavier sure. attacks mm -hmm. against you. So you got to stand strong. You got to trust in God even no more. Amen. Amen. But you have something called life experience mm -hmm. that's going to help you on the journey now. You should trust in the Lord now more than you did five years ago. Mm -hmm. As long as you're continuing to abide in Him. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. You should be trusting in Him more. Jesus trusted the Father to lead Him to the men and the women that He would call His disciples and His followers. Mm -hmm. He had to trust the Father for that. All right. He even trusted that the Father knew what He was doing when He sent Him a snake into his ministry. Mm -hmm. He had to trust God even on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, sometimes God will allow the snakes into your life to develop in you a deeper trusting in him mm -hmm. or a closer fellowship. Sometimes you have to get bit mm -hmm. by those closest to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a Judas kiss. Mm -hmm. You have to go through some things. And develop even a deeper trust. See, sometimes we can get so comfortable all around the sheep that we forget what a wolf looks like. All right. All right. All right. Yes. 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 Forget what it smells like. Yeah. Forget what it sounds like. Because mm -hmm. we're so comfortable. Mm -hmm. See, complacency is the enemy of faith and trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we can't stop. We have to go further in God. Amen. What do we do? Jesus put no trust in the flesh, and he snuck away daily to spend time with the Father. Mm -hmm. He needed to hear that reassuring voice yeah. from his dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He had trust in him. Yeah. When the religious leaders are saying one thing, then the disciples are saying another, mm -hmm. then the crowd another, Jesus knew how to get away. Yeah. And in whom his trust lied in. Right. He never forgot that. He trusted in God. He could be betrayed by his closest friends. It didn't matter. He trusted in God. He could be bruised and broken and falsely accused. He trusted in God. Oh, right. yes, he did. Right. He could be beaten and bloody for mankind. Hung on a splinter, old cross. It did not matter. He still trusted in God. Oh, yes. Jesus trusted in God the Father so much that when God came to him with the request that he redeem mankind, mm -hmm. a creation that he hadn't even made yet, because the decision was made for him to redeem mankind before. God even created mankind. Mm -hmm. And he told him it was going to cost him all of his glory, all of his standing with him, all of his honor for a little while. Mm -hmm. Some would reject him, hate him. And some would be separated from God forever. Mm -hmm. Jesus trusted that God would restore him to his former glory. And make his name higher than every man. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. He trusted God. Hallelujah. And God honored Jesus' trust by allowing him to present every born again believer back to the Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. There's only one way to the Father. All right now. There's only one way. One way. One way. And it's through the Son. Yeah. And that is his honor mm -hmm. for trusting him. And Almighty God. Amen. So the question that I have today, will you trust the Lord? All right. All right. And will you trust the plan that He has for your life? Yes, amen. Trust in the Lord. Yes. With all thy heart. Yes. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways. Acknowledge Him. And He shall direct you. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you. Love Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Amen.